Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game between Earth and Space and if you're wondering why Earth is playing a game of chess with space it's because today is the 50th anniversary of the first ever game played between Earth and Space. Uh, the, uh, the crew of Soyuz 9 played against ground control uh, and the game ended in a... well I'm not gonna spoil it for you in case you haven't seen it uh, but uh, the game uh, did end. Now, uh, here the honor of defending Earth goes to uh, Sergei Karakin, former World Chess Championship challenger, uh, as he does, doesn't really need any introduction, and he will be playing against uh, cosmonauts uh, Anatoly Ivaninchin and Ivan Wagner. Now, uh, these guys are some 400 kilometers uh, above the Earth on the International Space Station, which recently welcomed NASA astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley on their sp uh, SpaceX sp spacecraft, uh, while Sergei is playing from the Moscow uh, Museum of Cosmonautics, uh, and all this... Uh, uh, exactly 50 years after the first game uh, Space uh, uh, versus Earth. Now I will link uh, an article from Chess24 regarding this match. This uh, what I've just uh, uh, talked to you about is from the article. Uh, in there you can check out uh, also this game, the first ever game played. You can also check out the, this game being played live. Uh, it's uh, really awesome uh, with commentary from uh, Grandmaster uh, Evgeny Miroshnichenko. So do check it out. Uh, the, it will be the first thing you see in the description below. Uh, and here are uh, these gentlemen, uh, even Inchin and Wagner, uh, there you can see uh, they're uh, playing like this. They have a tablet and they are of course um, playing using a tablet. Uh, so you have to be careful uh, that it doesn't uh, float away. Uh, and uh, Sergei is uh, playing using a normal board and someone else of course is transmitting the moves. Now, if you think you know how this game is going to go, uh, you have no idea. This is one, one crazy game. Uh, so, without further ado, let's check it out. The cosmonauts get the white pieces as they did in the first ever game 50 years ago, and they open with E4. But in the first game, uh, they opened with the D4. So, let's see what, uh, what Karakin has in store for them. Uh, he replies with e5, we have knight to f3, knight to c6, and the bishop to b5. So the Ruy Lopez is on the board. Uh, we have a6, Morphe's defense, and here we have bishop captures. They go for the exchange variation. D captures on c6, and here they just castle. And Sergei goes for uh, bishop to e6. He offers the e5 pawn, but it's not really offered since after captures you can just go queen d4, and after the knight moves you, you win back your pawn by, gra by grabbing the e4 pawn. So after bishop to e6, uh, we have b3, a very rare continuation, uh, and uh, Karakin continues with c5. Now, here uh, obviously you cannot capture the e5 pawn because queen here will attack both the knight and the rook on a1. Uh, and there is one game in the, in the database where d3 was played, but here however, the cosmonauts actually do go for knight captures on e5. And here uh, we reach the position from the thumbnail. Uh, or, you know, uh, I might not put it in the thumbnail, but uh, I probably will. Uh, so here knight captures on e5 and uh, Sergei pretty much instantly played queen to d4 as now both the knight and the rook are under attack so now if you move the knight you lose the rook if you save the rook somehow by playing c3 or knight to c3 you lose the knight but here they go knight to c4 and it's uh, it's very interesting uh, because if uh, Sergei uh, goes for the rook with queen captures on a1 then bishop to b2 only move uh, that doesn't lose the queen is queen captures on a2 and then knight to c3 traps the queen uh, all of these squares are covered by the knights and this is uh, a1 square is covered by the bishop so the queen is lost so here you would probably have to go for bishop captures on c4 white grabs the queen bishop captures on f1 king captures and you end up uh, with this position where white has a queen and uh, as compensation black has uh, two rooks uh, but with the king still being in the center of the board and none of the piece are, pieces are developed white should be better here uh, so instead, uh, Karakin goes for bishop captures on c4, he eliminates uh, one of the knights, so now you are of course ready to capture the rook, and now uh, pretty much everyone would expect c3, and after the queen moves, only then do you uh, win back your piece. But this isn't what happens. Uh, here, after bishop captures on c4, the cosmonauts actually play b captures on c4, and they sacrifice an entire rook. Uh, which uh, Karakin goes for. We have queen captures on a1 and now knight to c3. Now the queen is trapped, however you don't lose the queen uh, since uh, there isn't, uh, you don't have a way of attacking the queen, but the queen has no squares. Uh, so it's uh, it's like black is down a queen, but, but not really. Uh, so here Karakin goes for the immediate b5, saying I want to play uh, I want to play b4, dislodge your knight and then bring my queen back into the game by either uh, going to let's say queen e5, queen f6, or maybe even just by grabbing the a2 pawn. 
However, queen to h5 here, moving the queen away from the first rank and now preparing bishop to a3, which will indeed uh, win the queen. So here, uh, Karakin doesn't really have uh, all that much to do about it. If uh, b4, uh, just uh, getting the knight uh, away, then still bishop to a3 will win the queen. So instead, he goes for knight to f6. He attacks white's queen. Uh, we have queen back to f3. If queen to e5 check, king d8 is very strong, then the bishop can come to d6, the rook can come to d8, and black will uh, have a very nice development. So queen back to f3 instead, and only now b4 saying now you either move the knight or you you trap my queen but they go for e5 and they just uh, this is uh you know these guys are no reverse gear cosmonauts they're just uh you know everything is moving forward now the rook is under attack the <laughs> knight is under attack and also well just uh, bishop to e3 will be the threat of winning the queen so uh Sergei has to do something about this he just castles here and it's uh, quite the idea. I don't think I've mentioned, but uh, the time format here is, it's sort of a classical game since it's uh, 45 minutes each. I don't know if there's increment. Uh, I don't think they've mentioned it. If any of you do know, do share in the comments uh, so, so all of us can learn. Uh, but here, okay, if you go for this, captures, then black can just capture here, and then you no longer trap the queen because you can just... Uh, uh, get away from the queen, but still, queen to a8 check will pose a lot of problems for the black king. Uh, you, you don't, maybe you don't have anything with white, but uh, you probably do have a, a perpetual. So here, after a queenside castles, bishop to a3. Now everything is hanging, and uh, well, uh, what do you do here? Uh, of course, queen captures on f1. You do not allow rook captures queen, so at least you grab the rook. Uh, with check, king captures on f1, and now b captures on c3. Eliminating the knight here, we have e captures on f6, and now c captures on uh, d2. Uh, other than this, uh, if you don't go for this uh, with the threat of d1 queen, white is just better. There is uh, no way around this. So uh, uh, Sergei has to go for c captures on d2. Now he's threatening d1, which would bring another queen into the game, and of course black would be much better here. So uh, white has to go for queen to a8 with check. We have king to d7 and now queen to d5 with check. So what do you do here? You either go back or you go back. Well, uh, obviously. Uh, or you block with the bishop, but the bishop to d6 is very dangerous. For example, if bishop to d6, then you get f captures on g7, attacking this rook, and after the rook moves, let's say rook goes over here, then bishop here, and uh, now everything is nicely defended. White also has a very strong pass pawn on g7. Yes, you still have two rooks against the queen, but this uh, pawn is going to fall, and uh, white, white will be much better here with the bishop and queen against uh, two rooks with the black king so wide open. So here, Karakin has no other option but to go back. King to c8, and the cosmonauts repeat. Queen to a8 with check. King to d7, queen to d5 check. King to e8 now, Karakin still not ready to, to agree to a draw, uh, but now queen to e4 with check. And here, uh, you, don't have a, you don't have a move. If bishop to e7, queen just captures this checkmate, so you can't even offer some material to keep the game going. Uh, so king back to d7, and it was in this position that uh, Sergei Karakin uh, offered the draw, and uh, the cosmonauts, uh, well, accepted the draw, as uh, they also don't have a way uh, of pushing for more than a draw here. So uh, if uh, you're like me, you're probably wondering what just happened here. Like, how strong are these guys? They just, uh, you know, casually play a game against a former World Chess Championship challenger, uh, you know, sacrifice everything, and he barely escapes with a draw. I mean, uh, <laughs> how strong <laughs> How strong are these guys? Uh, or, I mean, uh, I, I do imagine they have some free time up there, but I, 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 I didn't think they, they'd be playing so much chess. So really impressive game uh, by... Uh, by uh, by the three of them, I mean, it was uh, very, very impressive. Uh, if, if you want, uh, I do recommend you check out the link in the description below and do check out the original footage as it's just, uh, uh, it's just awesome. The, <laughs> um, I mean, and, and the game is so great. Uh, everything just moves forward. There's no going back. It's, it, it's what we all enjoy in chess. 
So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so the result, uh, Space to Earth, uh, remains uh, uh, a tie. Uh, the first match 50 years ago ended in a... Oh, now I've messed it up. I, I, I thought I'm not going to tell you how it ended, as maybe you guys want to check it out, but I messed up. But yeah, the first uh, match ended in a draw, and this one also ended in a draw. So uh, we do have time to prepare for 2070, and then maybe uh, either Earth or Space can, can grab a lead. So uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Shuan Wang, uh, Paul Runge, uh, Tobias Rath, Stone Music, and Jody Paulette for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of everything we're covering, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens uh, in the world or you know outside of it. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.